My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable three-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty dinner ideas using everyday ingredients. Hey guys, Happy New Year. Today is Sunday, January 1st, and I'm trying out a new recipe today for smothered ribs. Of course, I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. Um, but what I've got in my casserole dish here is pork ribs that I've cleaned and cut, seasoned them with black pepper, thyme, and salt. This originally is a crock pot recipe. You're supposed to cook it on high for four hours, but I am going to um, make mine in the oven uh, 325 for three hours. So there's an um, alternative for oven directions and I'll make sure to, of course, leave that in the description box as well. So now it's time to start making the roux for that smothered sauce gravy. Okay, so I've got some oil in my pan here, and now I'm adding in some flour. I'm gonna give this a stir and let this get nice and brown. Okay, so my roux is nice and brown, and now the recipe says to either add water or um, water or broth, and I am using water, and I'm adding in my better than bouillon. And then it says just to let the mixture come to a boil. Okay, so my broth came to a boil. To that, I'm adding in an onion. It's one large onion that I chopped up. I will say the broth, it was kind of too thin for me, so I made a cornstarch slurry and added that in and uh, added some more salt and pepper to the gravy. Now I'm adding in some garlic and I'm gonna give it another good stir, and then I'm gonna pour it over my ribs. So my ribs are almost finished cooking, and I'm making some fried cabbage. So in my skillet, I have four slices of um, thick cut bacon that I cooked up, and uh, I let that fat render. Um, I took out some of the fat, the bacon fat, and put it in a jar that I keep in the refrigerator and now all I'm doing is adding in my chopped cabbage. This I would say is a large head of cabbage um, and I'm just putting it in the pan and of course it'll wilt down once some of that water comes out. So my cabbage has cooked down a little bit and now I'm just adding in some Lowry's and also some pepper and I'm gonna give it a stir and just let it continue to cook down a bit. Okay, so here's our dinner. I baked the ribs for three hours and they are tender and they have a great flavor. I am glad that I thickened up that gravy because I really do think it would have been too loose. So you may have to thicken your gravy if you like yours a little, little thicker. Here is the cabbage as well. The secret to the cabbage is not adding any water. That cabbage will make more than enough water for you. And then I'm just serving it all over some white rice. One thing I did forget to mention is that today kicks off the January pantry challenge that I have or I do every single year. So if you wanna join in, feel free. But um, anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So today is Monday, January 2nd, and I wanted to show you all some of the meal prep that I'm doing for the week. In my freezer, I have a bunch of chicken, so I decided to boil some up. I've got some legs in there, and then I've also got some boneless, skinless chicken breast, and I am going to take the meat off the bones and um, you know, chop up the chicken for casseroles that I'm gonna be doing in the upcoming couple of weeks. And I wanted to show you the meal plan. So I usually make five meals per week and the days that the meals are on will not necessarily be cooked on that date, but it just helps me to kind of keep things organized. So yesterday was New Year's and um, that was my New Year's dinner. And then I am also planning to make a chicken pot pie this week, tortellini, tomato soup, um, pizza braid and teriyaki meatballs. The chicken pot pie is probably what I'm gonna use the majority of this chicken for, but depending on how much I have left, I'll probably be able to get another 
casserole or something like that out of it. But anyway, we are going to be having leftovers from New Year's today for dinner. And um, the next time I cook will be on Tuesday. So I'll see you then. So for dinner tonight, we are having tortellini soup with Italian sausage and spinach. Of course, everything that I am using, I already had on hand. I have some frozen onions here that I'm gonna be using, using up that chicken broth that I um, saved from the other day when I boiled all that chicken. It did congeal, but that is fine. That is normal. Using some crushed tomatoes, some cheese tortellini that I had in the fridge, garlic. Recipe calls for fresh basil. I don't have any at all. Just gonna be using this Italian seasoning. Um, had some hot Italian sausage in my freezer. And then I have half a bag of uh, spinach also in my freezer. And the recipe only calls for two cups, so that's plenty. And all you do is just basically cook up the uh, meat and add everything in. I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. Okay, so my meat and my onions and garlic are all done. I just added in my tomato sauce. Well, actually, I'm sorry, it's not tomato sauce. It's crushed tomatoes. Now I'm adding in that congealed chicken broth. It'll liquefy. And that's Harrison in the background, if you hear anything. And so I'm just gonna let that chicken broth liquefy. And then it says to let this simmer for about 20 minutes. So my soup has been simmering away and now it's time for me to add in my spinach and my tortellini. So here is the soup and it is pretty tasty, very easy to make, serving it with a garlic Parmesan hamburger bun. We had some in the freezer, I mean not freezer, the fridge that needed to be used. So I just buttered them up and added some Parmesan. I was gonna add garlic, but I didn't. And popped it in the air fryer. And so this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So here is our dinner tonight. I made the pizza braid. I have made this on our channel before. I'll make sure to link that um, video, which has the recipe in the description box. Of course, everything I already had on hand. It's a thin crust refrigerated pizza. I had cheese in the freezer. It's mozzarella cheese. I had pepperoni in the freezer and Italian sausage in the freezer. And then we're just having some pizza sauce on the side. I was going to have a side salad, but I opened up the bag of lettuce and it had already gone bad. So quick and easy dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are having a chicken pot pie. In my freezer, I um, have this pie crust from Trader Joe's. Never tried it before. I've been, uh, I let it thaw out. And also in my freezer, I had some frozen broccoli. This was actually fresh broccoli that I didn't get a chance to use. And I just threw it in the freezer, just like this. I have a potato that I'm gonna chop up. I'm gonna use some of this frozen corn, not all of it. And then I'm gonna use a can of cream of potato soup. And then this is the chicken that I made earlier this week that I boiled. And then I'm just gonna season it with some seasoned salt. Okay, so here is the pot pie. I took it out of the oven about 10 minutes ago. I ended up baking it for an hour and 10 minutes. And I cut a slice out. And as you can see, I didn't cut the entire um, bottom crust out, I missed some, but I wanted you all to see that crust and how golden brown it got. Um, so I mentioned to you guys, and here it is on the plate, that I was using the Trader Joe's pie crust for the first time. I heard a lot of good things about it. So I just wanted to show you, let me try to focus here. Where are they? Oh, here they are. So um, this is different than the Pillsbury crust in that it's a butter crust. You can see that it has flour, and then palm oil water and then butter. So the crust is really flaky. It definitely tastes um, more homemade. It's really light and flaky and it, it does taste like a homemade crust, so it's pretty good. Very different than the Pillsbury refrigerated crust, which I do still love. But if you're looking for something more homemade, this is definitely it. Um, also, I thought that the filling was a little bit dry, so I ended up adding half a can of cream of chicken soup to it um, as well. So anyway, this is what we're having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. 
So this is our final dinner of the week. It is supposed to be teriyaki meatballs, but um, I didn't have the right teriyaki sauce, so I had to use this Hawaiian barbecue sauce, which Howard and I really like a lot. Um, the meatballs that I am using are these chicken meatballs from Adele's. I found these on clearance a long time ago, uh, teriyaki and pineapple. So I just um, cooked them in the, well, they're fully cooked, but I heated them in the skillet. Then I added that uh, barbecue sauce having a side of leftover cabbage, and then also made some chicken flavored rice. So this is generic store brand, um, like rice aroni. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time.